day, one day, while I'm going where Jesus lives, one day, one sweet day, I'm going where Jesus lives, one day, one day, I'm going where Jesus lives, I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. I'll be caught up to meet him, I'll be caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness will be mine. Tell the story of his glory, I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took the lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flax of oil with their lamp. At the bridegroom, as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will be not enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaid came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus send me one day. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus send me one day. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, save me one day. I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. I'll be caught up to meet him. I'll be caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness will be mine. Tell the story of his glory. I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. Oh, by, by and by, well, I'm going on a chariot drive. Oh, by, by and by, and I'm going on a chariot drive. Oh, by, by and by, I'm going on a chariot drive. I'll be caught up to meet him. I'll be caught up to meet him, I'll be caught up to meet him. Joy and happiness will be mine. Tell the story of his glory, I'll be caught up to meet him in the end. Amen.
still getting used to this virtual church. But we have the hope, that is our hope, that one day we will be caught up to meet him in the air. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about heaven to know that at the end of this life's journey, there is a hope of life eternal. And that to be absent from this body, we have the assurance that we'll be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Powerful message from the gospel reading this morning the parable of the ten virgins. And now we know that a parable is a short, simple story of common life that com conveys a spiritual truth, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And parables help to illustrate the invisible spiritual world by using analogies from the visible natural world to illuminate the great truths and mysteries and lessons of God. And Jesus used these parables to encourage, to fulfill prophecy, to reveal truth, to at times conceal the truth, to captivate people's attention, to enable his audience to retain his message, and to also expose his enemies' wrong motives. And parables also gave messages of warning and correction for those who would not take heed to God's word. And you know, the parables, I think of the, one of the Jamaican parables that I grew up hearing in my family, pepper bun hot, but it good for curry. And for those of us from the Caribbean, we know that means that at times the pepper, it might sting, but it adds flavor. It brings out a fragrance. And these parables sometimes bring correction and for us to take heed to warning so that it would bring out the fragrance and the flavor within our life, that we would be the better for it. And in today's gospel reading, the parable of the ten virgins. We receive a message of warning, yet also one of hope. The parable of the ten virgins is a difficult message to swallow. It burns hot, but it's necessary to take in that we may experience a true abundance of a life of peace in this life and in the life to come. So beloved, for the time that is ours to share, I'm going to preach from the topic of don't forget your oil. And if you can type that in the box on the virtual screen on Rich Ring Central or say that to someone with you in your living room, don't forget your oil. Now the context of this parable can be found one chapter earlier in Matthew's account in Matthew 24, where the disciples request to know what sign would signal the Lord's coming and the end of the age. Jesus responds to them about the last days, and he explained that the end would not come immediately, but only after considerable time and tribulation. And Jesus warned them that during these perilous times, there would be many wolves in sheep's clothing that would seek to turn men's attention and affections away from Jesus, the true Messiah. And in Matthew's gospel, in Matthew 25, Jesus explains that these end times would be likened to the anticipation of a wedding banquet to which the bridesmaids take their lamps and await the coming of the bridegroom. In a sense, Matthew 24 raises the following question. On what basis will we be judged? And the answer we can find in Matthew 25, it is preparedness. The parable of the 10 virgin provides a picture of when the Lord returns on the day of judgment, and the period of tribulation that will ensue before he returns. The prepared will be saved and enter into the kingdom, while the unprepared will be cast out. And the ten virgins represent the church divided into two groups. One group, the wise, who are prepared and eagerly waiting, since they have obtained oil for the journey, and in the event a delay occurs, occurs in the coming of the bridegroom. The first group represents the true believers of the faith and are prepared. However, the second group represent the foolish. Those who did not prepare, they represent the unbelievers, those who were not ready for the coming Messiah. Make sure you have your oil. Don't forget your oil. Jesus warns that 
the Lord's return would not be immediate, as the disciples suppose, but at a much more distant time. But when he does come, it will be without warning, at a time when we don't expect him. And when he comes, our fate will be sealed. The Bible says that he will come like a thief in the night. And there's something to be said about the night because the night represents sometimes our darkest hours or the hours when we are most vulnerable because we are asleep and we're more likely to become relaxed and taken off guard. And as in life, the physical, natural understanding of sleep in the spiritual, we must be careful that we not fall asleep. We fall asleep because of disappointment at times. We fall asleep because we don't want to see the truth of things around us. We fall asleep because we have become so easily enticed by the superficial things of this world. We fall asleep because of distractions and or because we have lost the courage and the hope to hold out a little while longer. Paul likened this faith to a marathon. And he said, I have ran the course. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. However, all too often, many of us don't start off strong or we start off ill-prepared for the marathon and we treat it like a yard dash and grow weary in the long haul. Don't forget your oil. The parable of the virgins describes the sleepiness that spreads through the community that tires of waiting for the bridegroom. And although it can become frustrating, waiting with anticipation for the bridegroom, waiting for the day when we will finally celebrate with him in joy. We must realize that God doesn't work according to our schedule and the bridegroom does not arrive when we want him to. An interesting note of the parable is that everyone fell asleep. Everyone fell asleep, both the wise virgins and the foolish ones. And in life, we all fall asleep at one point or another. It is an inevitable fact of life. However, it is not avoiding sleep that differentiates the wise from the foolish, but that the wise were prepared for the journey. I'm going to say that again. What differentiates the wise from the foolish was that the wise were prepared for the journey. St. Thomas, I ask you this morning, are you prepared for the journey ahead? Have you purchased your oil? Don't forget your oil. So you might be asking, Reverend Lloyd, what is this oil that you're talking about? And what does it mean to be ready? You know, now I grew up in scouting. I'm a e for former Eagle Scout. And our motto in scouting was be prepared. And if we didn't come prepared for our camping trip or prepared for life, we would be called out on it. And that motto was simply taken into every aspect of our life. The basic necessities we must be um, have around us to ensure a successful and pleasurable outcome. And the parable of the 10 virgins centers on different symbols that illustrate this idea of being prepared with the items of the lamp and the oil. They are common symbols that we see throughout the Bible. And if you have your pen and paper, take notes. For the lamp reminds us of Jesus's invitation to be the light of the world that the lamp cannot be hidden under a bushel. It reminds us that life should not be wasted and we cannot hide from life. It also reminds us of the city on the hill that shines for the wayfarers so that they can see their goal, just as our lives should shine for others in helping them to find their way. The oil also represents the presence of God in our life, the presence of the Holy Spirit, it is the oil that keeps the fire burning. It is mentioned in the parable that the oil is to be purchased, which means that a price is to be paid to obtain this oil, to have a continual presence of God in our lives. We have to pay the price by spending time at Jesus' feet, seeking his face through prayer, devotion, and repentance, by not only being hearers of the word, but doers of the word, but most importantly, we must have faith and believe in him. Only the presence of God in our life can keep the fire burning through the dark nights. Only one who has the fire burning in him will be able to go with the bridegroom when he returns. 
And for it is this vigilance and that guards us from temptation when we struggle with spiritual tiredness and the impending night. My time with seeking and preparing and anticipating the Lord coming empowers me. It keeps my lamp of my soul filled and ready for the wedding feast. And although we may sleep, we must be prepared. St. Thomas, don't forget your oil. The Bible says we must watch and pray. We must be vigilant. For the Bible says, behold, I am coming like a thief in the night. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. The Lord is saying, St. Thomas, don't be taken off guard. Don't become distracted or disheartened. The Lord is saying, I have given you forewarning so that when I come, although you may not know the time nor the hour, you would not be caught surprised. And that if you bring your faith, your heart, your life, your fire, your zeal, and your oil for me, I will not leave you behind. I will not suffer you to be ashamed for the bridegroom has come. And for you have the mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared yourself for my return. Cry out in your home to your family members, don't forget your oil. The word reminds us that in the last days, difficult times will come for people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful and arrogant and blasphemous, disobedient, unloving, unreconcilable, without self-control, opposed to what is good. They will maintain the outward appearance of religion, but will have repudiated its power. Being ready for Christ's return requires that we must be born again. This new birth will manifest itself in every area of our lives. If we are to be prepared, ready for Christ's return, we must be born again. It is by grace of God and saving faith in the gospel of Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection from the dead, that we shall be saved. And the beauty of this is that salvation is free. The Bible lets us know that we have been justified by faith and this saving faith in Jesus will make manifest itself in every area of our lives by the fruit of the spirit with an ever increasing desire to live a life of self-control, holiness, love, compassion, a life set apart, a life that seeks to avoid or cause injury or harm to another, a life that seeks and panteth after God, a life that resists sin and abstains from the very appearance of evil, a life that is eager to do what is good and to be about your father's business. Don't forget your oil. You see, the five virgins without the oil represents the false believers who enjoy the benefits of the Christian community without true love for Christ. They are more concerned about the party than about longing to see and be with the bridegroom. Their hope is in their association with the true believers. And as the foolish um, virgins asked the wise virgins, give us some of your oil. These are the ones that think they can be saved just because they made it to church a few Sundays out of the year. They believe that their salvation is determined by how much money they put in the offering plate or their salvation is based upon how many ministries can I get involved in? They unconsciously or consciously hold this belief that these outward gestures without an inward renewal will earn them points into getting into heaven. Or oh, the papa bun's hot this morning, but it's good for Curry St. Thomas. These virgins represent those in the body of Christ that have forgotten to get their oil. Those who run out of oil or refuse to buy oil are the people who refuse to take heed to the warning of God's word and the invitation of salvation through faith in Jesus. Where there is no faith, there is no oil. Where there is no oil, there is no hope of salvation. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone hears my voice, open the door, I will come into them. And I like this because it says to me that the Lord is a gentleman. He doesn't bust through the door and tell you what to do, but he gives you an opportunity to make a decision for yourself. 
he gives us an opportunity to dwell with him and to obtain the oil. But for the five virgins who had the extra oil represents the truly born again who are looking with eagerness to the coming of Christ. They have saving faith and have determined, come what may, for God I live and for God I'll die. The road may be long, night may fall, and it may seem dark, but I'm going to press on by faith to see what the end is going to be. How many know that when the bridegroom re returns, he will be looking for those that were waiting with eagerness, that were prepared, and that brought the oil of faith? St. Thomas, do not run the risk of falling into the path of those who did not purchase oil or those who did not think they needed it. And at the last moment, their fate was sealed. The disciples asked Jesus, what are the signs of the end times? How many know that God has often given us ample warnings, ample opportunities, many signs for us to get ready and to get it together? For those who run out of oil, they suppose that they have plenty of time left. It's like driving a car and you're low in glass and you see the gauge saying that you're close to empty and you only deceive yourself by saying, I know my car, I know I'm gonna to get to my destination. And then before you know it, your car stops and you run out of gas because you failed to purchase the oil before your journey. You knew the gas was low before you got into the car. You saw the gas gauge, you saw the blinking lights, but you did not take heed to the warning. You convinced yourself into thinking there is still time to deal with the problem. There will surely be another gas station ahead. This false confidence is a dangerous assumption. We may never have the opportunity of tomorrow. We may never have another chance to come into faith with Jesus. That is why it is important that we choose him today. For the coming of our Lord will be sudden and unexpected. And when he comes, all chances of changing our course would have been over. The coming of the Lord ends our opportunity to turn to him in faith. And it seals our fate. Don't forget your oil. How can we ensure we have enough oil to keep the lamp of our faith and spirit burning? The word of God reminds us in 2 Corinthians, put yourselves to the test to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize regarding yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test? The Bible says that we cannot be saved by doing good works, but only through the work, the finished work of Christ on Calvary. Jesus wants us to be careful about assuming we are saved. If indeed we are not, it is for this reason that the word of God reminds us to examine ourselves. The only way of salvation is for men to first acknowledge that they are a sinner and to trust in the sacrificial death of Christ and the finished work of Calvary. In daily examination, we do as the scripture implores and we repent. For the word of God reminds us, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Examination requires us to acknowledge the sin and make the effort to turn. We must rid ourselves of all evil and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Oh, come on. And yearn like newborn infants for pure spiritual milk so that we might grow up in our salvation. Don't forget your oil. The foolish virgins thought that they could just enter into the celebration by taking some of the oil from the wise virgins who were prepared. And to their surprise, they learned the harsh reality that without preparation, there is no access. There is no entrance into the kingdom by association. We can't sneak our way, bribe our way, force our way, pay our way. One's faith in Jesus cannot save another. Your grandfather or your mama's faith, their oil cannot save you. They can pray for you. They can encourage you. They can live and model the life for you the example that will influence you. But at the end, the choice to accept the gospel is yours. 
you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And the daunting fact of this parable is that all the virgins started out on the journey at the same time and during the day. And we can deduce that this, they didn't start out at night because the word tells us that they fell asleep and after the bridegroom was delayed. This lets us know they had ample time on their journey to acquire oil. It was not until night had fallen and they heard the call that the bridegroom was coming that they trimmed their lamps. It was only at the midnight hour that the foolish virgins acknowledged that they were stuck. Don't forget your oil. They were almost at the party, but now had forfeited their entrance because of not being prepared. They were so close, so close, yet so far. Do you know that it is possible to come into close contact with the Savior and with Christians and yet still not be saved? And in this parable, Jesus gives us a forewarning in the parable, as with the bridesmaidens, that if we fail to fully accept his invitation of being prepared, he will not acknowledge us. And the Lord will declare, I knew thee not. There will be nothing worse than at the end of this life's journey to know that your efforts were all in vain. I don't know about you, but at the end of this life's journey, all I want to hear is the Savior say, my Lord to say, well done, well done, Amen. thou good and faithful servant, well done, enter into the joy of the Lord. Don't forget your oil, St. Thomas. And I know this is hard, this is some real hot pepper this morning, but there is some hope in this message as well to the believer. Paul says, he ran the race, he fought the good fight, he finished the course, he kept the faith. For unto them lies an eternal heavenly reward of eternal life. And the hope in Christ, the blessed assurance of salvation is ours for the believer. He saved us not by works of righteousness, that we have done, but on the basis of his mercy, through the washing of the new birth and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When we made the decision to choose Christ by repenting daily, turning from our sins, and seeking after him, being not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word, we can live in and experience the assurance and peace of salvation. The word of God reminds us, the Lord said, behold, I show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. For in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Then we who are alive will be left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And we will be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. I will come back and take you to be with me. The bridegroom says that you also may be where I am. And I like that because Jesus also said, you know the way. Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Don't forget your oil. The Bible says that no man knows the time, the day, nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. But we do know this one thing, that he will return. So we must examine ourselves. And St. Thomas, I ask you this morning, how will you be found when the Lord returns? There will be no time to muster up faith at the last minute. There'll be no time to find and go away to make a purchase of oil for the life that you have lived will already speak for you and your faith will be sealed. St. Thomas, will you be prepared when the bridegroom comes or will you forfeit your entrance, entrance into paradise? Will the Lord deny you? The Lord says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I have set before you 
life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your descendants may live. And beloved, take the time now, 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 to fulfill this duty, to fill your lamp with oil. Keep watching and waiting and praying with joy and anticipation, for there is a shout that is coming that will declare the coming of the bridegroom. Fuel your lamp of your spirit to light the way on your journey to the bridegroom. And remember, don't forget your oil. <laughs>